Welcome to Stand in the Gap Today from the American Pastors Network. We proclaim truth in the public square by connecting a biblical worldview and constitutional principles to the most significant news of the day. Simple, careful, and truthful. That's Stand in the Gap Today. Now, here's your host. Well, welcome to the program. I'm Pastor Isaac Crockett. I'm the pastor at East Lawrence Baptist Church up uh, on the borderline of, of Pennsylvania and New York State. And uh, I'm the, the, one of the co-hosts on this program. My fellow co-host, who's the regular host of the Stand in the Gap program, is the Honorable Sam Rohr, the president of the American Pastors Network. And Sam, we've got uh, so much that has gone on this week um, ever since Saturday. But then there's the Republican National Convention going on. Donald Trump uh, slated to speak tonight. Um, Sam, just thank you so much for being on with me, and I, I think I hope you're excited about about our program today. Well, Isaac, uh, I am because these are really momentous days. You, you know, know, I don't, I don't remember, remember a week, week well, well, like, like this, this obviously, obviously precipitated by the, the attempt on, on the president's, president's life last Saturday night. night. That's, That's changed, changed everything, and so you've got, got a lot of different things happening, going, going different directions, directions, so much speculation, so much, so much that is not true, so, so much hopeful anticipation on the part of many, and then you've got the convention this week, and the president changing the thrust of his speech because of what happened on Saturday night. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things happening, really are. Well, well, and, and we, we want to focus, focus on not, not the sensational and not, not the subjective or, you know, well, I think we just want to focus on truth and bring this back to biblical truth, but not let this opportunity pass. Seeing what's going on, everything is, uh, is, is of God's providential hand and his care for us and his judgment of us. And, uh, and so we want to look at this. And, and Sam, I think what we're seeing when we look at the Republican National Convention as it's been unfolding this week and, and the pushback to it, the changes that have been made and things, speakers to it, uh, everything, we see that, that both Republicans and Democrats and everybody in between, they have their own views on morality, and they stand very strong on their, their views of morality. We also see that there is a push right now saying we need to dampen the rhetoric and we need to increase the unity. We're the United States of America. And so we, I want to dig into that with you um, on this program. But um, right now, in the meantime, I, I do want to kind of go back to where this week started with uh, the, the assassination attempt. And I um, want to, you know, at our church, and I, I'd be curious what our listeners, if you're listening right now or even later, uh, but especially if you're listening today on Friday, We'd love to get you to give us some feedback through Facebook, Twitter, email, uh, whatever. Go to the American Pastors Network or Stand in the Gap Media. Love to hear from you if you're a pastor or just what your pastor did, how you responded to an event like this, and maybe other things too, maybe mass shootings or you know 9-11 or different things like that. How does your church respond on Sunday to those things that happen? Sam, I can say that our prayer time that we have before our morning service where I pastor, uh, we we. We normally pray for authority. In fact, we were slated to pray for pre the president and vice president that morning. But I took out our normal prayer sheet, and we just prayed for our nation. We prayed for Donald Trump. Uh, we prayed for the, the family um, of those, the, the Corey, who had been killed and others who had been hurt, and for our nation, the children watching this graphic, literally a bloody image over and over and over. Um, and we prayed for our nation. We prayed for Donald Trump to, to have an opportunity to truly repent of his sins, get saved, and to show it publicly during this week, perhaps, or sometime soon. Uh, just a lot of things going on. We prayed for those in authority. First uh, Timothy chapter 2, uh, we prayed Psalm 91. We looked at our refuge, that we are hidden uh, under the wings. We find refuge under the wings of God. Um, and uh, and then we, we brought that into our morning service as well, opened up with that, and again, prayer throughout all of this. Um, but you, you talked about this also um, on Monday, and, and you gave maybe you could give us a little bit of a synopsis of some of the impact and opportunity that this provides when something like that happens in our nation. Um, well, I can, Isaac, and I started out by what we talk about a lot here: biblical worldview. Um, um, for, for a believer, believer looking at an event like, like that happened on Saturday night, night. But, but as we, we talk, talk about regularly, any event, uh, event what's, what's happening in the Middle East with Israel and Hezbollah and, and Iran and all of that, or, or Russia and Ukraine, Ukraine any all of these events, we say a biblical worldview, looking at it through the lens of Scripture, makes all the difference. And, and how, how we, we both analyze it, 
uh, evaluate whatever it is, and then make our decisions about how to respond. And, and as uh, George Barn has been with us so much, and you know, we talk about it again, he's made very, very clear, and it, we, we agree. There are two ways of looking at life generally, through the lens of a biblical world view where God is center and foremost and God's word is then late brought to bear, or anything else. So if it's not God directed and centered, then it's anything else. And they lead to two totally different conclusions. Second thing is this, that when events of the type happen like on uh, Saturday night, they clearly are out of the normal. Uh, they are... They, they are, are uh, incredible. incredible, they're, they're shocking, shocking. Um, well, and I'm, I'm going to put it in the same kind of comparison, comparison as perhaps 9-11, all right? Um, mm -hmm. People remember when it happened, those who were alive at that point, and, and most can remember where they were when that happened, happened. and we, we can also recall how people reacted. Some responded, some reacted to that, and I'm going to say the same things here. So I view these things, and I think from God's perspective, uh, we, we should, should view these, these kinds of events, events the spectacular events, as teachable moments. And, and ask the question, God, God from, from your perspective, perspective how should we respond to this? this? If, if we, we recall back to 9-11, how did the people respond? Well, the, the nation responded with fear, a reaction of, oh, no. And I think there were two questions that were asked. One of them was, and people, because people, we immediately went back to church. The churches were full for a little while. And that was, God, you were involved in this, clearly. So there was recognition that their God was involved. But then the question was, have we sinned, God? Is something, have we done something to warrant this? Well, that's a logical question. The next question was, can we ever feel safe again in America? Americans have had an unusual security given by God, we know, the Bible talks about, but, but we've come to think that, that security comes by the hand of government, our military, or whatever. Well, that was questioned at 9-11, and of course, what came out of that was people went and ended up trusting in government because government immediately stepped in and said, we can... We can correct this matter. We can guarantee it won't happen. And that was the Bush War on Terry, which, which goes on to this point. Patriot Act was passed. Liberties, constitutional freedoms were given up in exchange for government saying, we will take care of you. And people didn't go back to church anymore. And of course, we know that. Now, that was the response. We didn't learn. We did not learn as a nation from that. Well, here comes this. All right. Well, that event on Saturday night caught people's attention. The implications, we don't know, still haven't It's come to con conclusion, but the response should be the same thing. People generally, the Lord, God, you let this happen. A leader that many people like, many people don't like, but an individual had his life almost taken, and it would appear by all evidences that, God, you put your finger down there between his head in that bullet, and you preserved him. So now God's back in the picture for a minute, Isaac. The question is, will we go back to him and repent and fall on our knees, or will we just say that, well, there's a supernatural event that happened, but not make it personal? Mm, so interesting. You know, Paul told Timothy in, in uh, 1 Tim Timothy 2, as we pray for those in authority, it's so that we can live a quiet, peaceable life with godliness and holiness. So God's protection and us living, seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, a holy, peaceful life, they come together. We want to talk about this and much, much more on Stand in the Gap today. We'll be right back. Attention Christian school educators. BJU Press now offers a customizable digital learning platform for your students. If you're looking to integrate the latest technology into your classroom along with an academically and spiritually sound curriculum, BJU Press can help. A variety of online options including e-work texts and e-textbooks can be modified to offer the best educational experience for each child and equip you to help struggling students and enhance your teaching strategies. Streaming videos and DVD lessons and BJU's Christian Classroom Online are just a few of the many resources available. All materials offer a biblical worldview, focusing on academic rigor and encouraging critical thinking. Staying relevant in this age of advanced technology is challenging, but with BJU Press, you can meet these challenges creatively and successfully. 
Learn more today at BJUPress.com. That's BJUPress.com. For years, faithful Christians formed nonprofit foundations or trusts to preserve their ability to generously give to their favorite causes or ministries, even after their death. The problem? Professional managers, pressure from left-wing agendas, and even family members with opposing views hijacked the original donor intent. This is sad, but true. But this subversion of purpose can be prevented. Hello, I'm Sam Rohr of the American Pastors Network, and I'm glad to recommend Capstone Legacy Foundation in Wayne, Pennsylvania, an experienced and capable Christian community foundation. Established to help you set up a ministry, a giving structure guaranteed not to be hijacked, or a place you can donate cash or non-cash assets like stocks, bonds, or property, Capstone's designed to help you achieve immediate tax savings and give you needed time to decide how to prayerfully allocate your giving. Contact Capstone at 610-688-8890 or visit them at capstonelegacy.org. With a woman to look at culture from a Christian worldview, I'm John Stone Street with The Point. Today, over 800,000 parents are in federal state prisons. Of those, 92% are dads. Those who participate in programs like substance abuse treatments or employment and education programs are less likely to return to prison. Even more so are programs that help maintain and strengthen relationship between parents and their children during imprisonment. A recent video of the ministry God Behind Bars shows just how much joy is shared between imprisoned parents who are given the chance to spend just a day with their kids. Some of them hadn't seen each other in up to 10 years. Programs that teach inmates parenting skills and help inmates maintain family ties during prison time, quote, lead to more frequent contact between fathers and children and help inmates fare better when released. And yet only 11% of dads in state prisons have this kind of opportunity. As Anthony Bradley tweeted, quote, outside of spiritual formation, reuniting children with parents, especially fathers, must be a number one prison ministry priority. I'm John Stone Street. Our current lawless society is marked by violence, the attacking of churches and pregnancy centers, and generally clamoring for the right to murder the unborn. But don't faint. God's given us the plan for divine response in these evil days. Hello, I'm Sam Rohr with another Stand in the Gap Minute. Psalm 7-9 teaches that God establishes the righteous. Psalm 34-15 adds, The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous. So when it comes to the righteous, we must choose to obey the commands of God, live out the commands of God, genuinely know the truth, and unapologetically live and proclaim the truth. If we want God's blessing to return to our nation, it will require confronting evil, not running from it, advancing God's standards for a godly and orderly society after first starting in our own lives, then extending broadly into the culture. Only then can God's blessing on our lives and our nation be expected. Discover more at AmericanPastorsNetwork.net. You're listening to Stand in the Gap today. For more information, visit our website at StandInTheGapRadio.com. Well, welcome back to the program. I'm Isaac Crockett here with Sam Rohr, and we are asking Sam questions. This is one of our Friday editions, uh, Ask Sam and uh, as we were talking to Sam today about um, looking at his opinion, his observations of what we see, especially on a, a, a week like this week, so full of news, um, starting, you know, really on Saturday with the assassination attempt of Trump and uh, then going throughout the RNC this past week, their convention. And um, I'm asking Sam, you know, all sides are, are, are pointing out that they stand on the moral high ground for whatever purpose. This is what's moral. This is what's right. Um, and then we see throughout the media and throughout our country a, a push and a hope for unity. That, that's what people have been saying for you. Why can't we have more unity? Uh, why is there all this gridlock? Why is there partisan, you know, politics? Why is there this heightened rhetoric? And uh, and when something major like this happens, like a, an assassination attempt, um, it, it pushes us, you know. And and hopefully, and Sam, you talked about this some with David New and different ones this week. We've been talking about this this week. But how that can give an opportunity. And so, um, you know, here we have Trump being shot right after that. Many of his political enemies come out denouncing violence, Sam, uh, denouncing this hatred that's going on. And uh, they were saying things like there's no place for this sort of violence in America. In fact, Joe Biden said those exact words. There's no place in America for this kind of violence or any violence. Uh, again, Biden being kind of his, his arch uh, uh, political foe for the moment, and that could be changing. Um, he says, I'm grateful to hear that he, that's Donald Trump, that he's safe and doing well. 
I'm praying for him and his family and for all those who were at the rally. Again, how many of us were expecting to hear uh, over the weekend President Biden saying, I'm praying for President Trump and his family, but that all changed when he was shot. Um, and so I, I would curious, Sam, when you start seeing these sort of responses from, from the far left, uh, were you surprised at those responses? Were you, you know, surprised to hear Biden saying that um, when it's been such a heated election year? Um, I'm, Isaac, n- I'm, I'm not. not. It's purely, purely political. political. Now, now, why, why, why can, can I say that? that? Prince on, 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 on the part, part of Biden. Well, well I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm grateful. Grateful, grateful, grateful to, to who? God. God? Well, well no, there's, there's no, no manifestation of any acknowledgement on his part of the, the role of God in his life or policies. So that doesn't make any sense. sense. That, that he's, he's safe and doing well. well. That doesn't make any sense either because not too long before he talked about putting a target on him. And, uh, uh, so that, that, no, that doesn't, doesn't make any sense either. I'm praying for him. him. Well, well, as a believer, we know that the prayers the prayers don't mean anything. Anybody can pray. Pray to who? Uh, you, you know, know that, that doesn't mean anything. anything. So, um, I, I, so those are things that you say, Isaac, as a politician, to, to create a narrative where it sounds like you are compassionate. compassionate. Because politically, to say, ah, I'm sorry that he survived would not be responded to well by even the coarsest of individual. And, and therefore, therefore politically, politically unwise. So, so for, for a moment, moment in time, time you, you have, have to scale back your calling, scale back the rhetoric, the, the harshness of words, and, and show, show that you have some humanity, humanity meaning, meaning a little, little bit of compassion. compassion. Now, now it's, it's interesting. interesting. I think it's going to change. I think it's already changing in the attitude of um, of, 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 of many, and I think that the days ahead will tell. But, but I look, I look back, back, Isaac, and I say, did, did we just have a circumstance not too long ago where the same, the same thing happened? happened? And, and it, yeah, it's October 7th when Hamas went, went after Israel. Israel. For, For a f- couple of days, days if you recall, nearly every nation in the world, world even Russia, Russia um, and, and, and others said, well, well this, this is not, not acceptable. acceptable. But, but now they're all condemning. It didn't take long. It didn't take but a week. And, and everything, everything began to change. change. And, and now, now, now that's, that's all forgotten. forgotten. It's all political. It's, it's narrative, uh, uh, Isaac. And so I think that is what is happening. But there is a window of time here uh, by which I think Americans, the world's watching, but, but Americans can evaluate how we respond and what's related to that. Now, you mentioned also another thing, moral high ground. It, it is interesting, interesting to me that that, um, that both uh, those who would be, uh, you know, Christian, God-fearing conservatives um, have generally always wanted the moral high ground. And around the world, America has always maintained the moral high ground. Um, not, not just the political high ground, ground or the financial high ground, or the military high ground, but the moral high ground transcends all of them. them. But, but the, the left, the God, God opposers, the murderers of the unborn, the, unborn, uh, the redesigners of God's, God's definition of marriage, marriage they claim also to have moral high ground. ground. Uh, why? I think that's kind of interesting when they don't really agree that there is a God and don't care what God says. They, they still, still want, want to claim that which God has established, and that is the definer of morals, that which is right and wrong, and still want to be able to claim they have some type of supernatural uh, God uh, support that God's on their side. Uh, that hasn't changed, I think, from the beginning of time, but we certainly are witnessing now as well. Well, so that, that's a good, uh, let, let's go down that path real quick. Well, not real quick, but we don't have a lot of time, but... um. Let's go down that path because uh, this idea that we are against violence. Violence has no place. Political violence, and then they say violence at all. And we know that our, our statistics are showing lots of increases in violent crimes. Lots of also increases even in things like suicide and spousal abuse and child abuse. But our inner cities are, are in some cases on fire. I mean, it's called a dumpster fire. Sometimes it seems like a literal dumpster fire going on. And so our, our country is having violence from within, um, but they are condemning this very public act that ended up with, uh, you know, the the, the death uh, of Corey uh, Comparator and uh, others being wounded, including the president. 
Um, but is that hypocrisy when people, for example, are pro-abortion, ripping apart a baby before it's born? Is that hypocritical? And um, can we, as America, can we have true morality? Because everybody's claiming their own morality. Is this, you know, kind of modern thing? Like, well, my morality, your morality. Can we have true biblical or morals without biblical morals? Do we have to accept the Bible as our foundation, or is there some other way around it? Isaac, no, we cannot, we cannot have uh, agreement on that which is moral until we agree with the person, God, the source of that concept of good and evil, and that which is moral. You know, in this country, at the, from the very beginning, and around the world, but particularly we're talking about America, that morality was the Ten Commandments. God gave those Ten Commandments for civil society, for the enactment of justice. That was the template. That was the definer, the standard for morality. So God, worship of God, idolatry, um, uh, 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 sexual uh, purity, no adultery, murder, uh, stealing, protection of property, greed, all of those kind of things. All of those within the Ten Commandments were the basis for our law. It was that upon which we had to agree in this country in order for justice to occur. But when you throw that out, and then you begin to interpret it on your own, then you see what we've seen the last many years, the weaponization of the Justice Department. Uh, courts making law, redefining God's law of marriage, of life, and uh, human sexuality, and so many things. So there is a very high cost to the throwing out of God's definition. If we're not agreed and unified on God's definition of morality, Isaac, the only option left is immorality and evil, which is what we are seeing. So this is a great opportunity for this discussion to be held by our leaders and by our people to say, all right, let's get back and redefine the terms. You call it violence. Well, based on what? Then that, what's that mean? What's acceptable? How do you define that? Unless we go back to God's word and God as the determiner, the author of truth, Isaac, there will not ever be an agreement. Mm. You know, we talked about this recently on, on uh, just was it last week, maybe on this program, um, that America, the founding of America, was different than all the other countries in the New World because of the Pilgrim forefathers that started with Scripture. And they looked and they said, there, there's a justice system. Justice was not done against Jesus. Justice was not done against the, the Hebrew children thrown into the furnace. Justice was not done mm -hmm. in the case of Paul before the Roman courts. They, they had their own justice. They didn't, and, and there has to be this moral justice. Um, and and we'll, we'll talk about the unity part of it, uh, hopefully next segment. But they started with justice. And so, Sam, we just have like a minute here. Um, but uh, that biblical justice or biblical decency, biblical morality, mm -hmm. um, how is it that, that we seem to have had it at the founding of our nation and, and maybe are far from it now? Well, Isaac, Isaac in, in very, very quick terms, terms it was there because our founders, and uh, William Penn, Penn in Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania laid it out probably the best. The preachers of the day preached it. All the signers of the Declaration of Independence agreed to it fully. That was the Ten Commandments. God gave it. God created biblical worldview, sin entered into the world, they knew the evil of man's heart, why you had to have the Ten Commandments, and the people, they said then, the individuals and those who would be in office had to voluntarily submit themselves, voluntarily submit their actions and their choices to God's standard, the Ten Commandments. They said very clearly that only then could, Could you, you have, have this holy experiment and self-government survive? survive? Only, Only then could you have a just government with a predictable definition of justice and, and with a predictable outcome from the, the judges. judges. That's what they believed. It has not changed since the beginning, the time when God gave it and laid out the plan. Well, we want to take another quick time out to hear from some of our partners. I hope you'll listen uh, to, to what we have and some uh, information. Sometimes even you, so you can hear from Sam during our, our little breaks. But we're going to come back, and I, I want to look at this question 
Are we able to see a return to unity in our country today? We'll be right back on Stand in the Gap today. Family, commerce, civil authority, the church. Did you know these are the four pillars of society that God ordained to be the distributors, demonstrators, and protectors of truth? It's time to raise the biblical standard for each of these institutions once again. The American Pastors Network and its media ministries, Stand in the Gap Radio and TV, are using their national platform to analyze and evaluate today's cultural issues from a biblical and constitutional perspective. When you tune into Stand in the Gap today, or watch an episode of Stand in the Gap TV, you'll hear information ranging from the latest news headlines to the exciting fulfillment of prophecy in the Middle East. Guests like former Congresswoman Michelle Bachman, apologist Alex McFarland, and Citizens Council for Health Freedom's Twyla Brace offer insights from their valuable experience to help you better understand and defend your faith. To tune in, visit us at StandInTheGapMedia.org. That's StandInTheGapMedia.org. The United States boasts over 4 million miles of highways and public roads. Without accurate maps, though, and road signs, these roads are confusing. The road of life's no different. Thankfully, the Bible gives us needed markers and guidelines in the form of biblical commands and principles. Properly applying them is the difference between success and confusion when it comes to impacting our culture for Christ and being effective salt and light. For a gift of any amount to Stand in the Gap, we'll send you an attractive Stand in the Gap signpost with four simple questions and corresponding biblical principles about the toughest issues of the day, helping you to successfully travel the road of life. Use as a bookmark in your Bible, affix to your refrigerator, or give to a friend. Yours for a gift of any amount to Stand in the Gap. Partner with us right now at StandInTheGapRadio.com. That's StandInTheGapRadio.com. Here's Twyla Brays with today's Health Freedom Minute. On our list of 12 facts that expose dangerous healthcare myths is fact number 11. Every patient is vulnerable. Whether you're homeless, the president, a truck driver, or a housewife, the treatment you need you cannot get yourself. You rely on physicians and other healthcare workers to get you the care you need. Thus, you are vulnerable. You're dependent. This is why doctors and other practitioners have a professional obligation to you. These professionals are bound to ethical standards because they have a unique set of skills and make decisions on behalf of others. Thus, physicians are responsible to act in your best interest, not the interests of government, health plans, or hospitals. But today's system too often exploits patients, limits access to care, and acts on the interests of others. Let's change that. Help us secure health freedom for all. Visit cchfreedom.org. That's cchfreedom.org. You're listening to Stand in the Gap today, discussing the pressing issues facing our culture from a biblical and constitutional perspective. Now let's rejoin our host. Back to the program, I'm Pastor Isaac Crockett, and I'm joined by the Honorable Sam Rohr. And on this Friday edition, it's an Ask Sam, uh, uh, Stand in the Gap today edition. And we're asking Sam things about uh, this week and what's been going on, and especially the impact that this failed assassination tip uh, attempt on Donald Trump had uh, for us as a nation, what opportunities that opens up for us as Bible-believing Christians. And we've been looking at overall this idea of uh, a desire on many to see um, a, a strengthening of our national morality and decency, as well as a strengthening of our national unity or or, or having <laughs> decency and unity again. And so we're kind of looking at, is it even possible? And, and what would it take to, to have that. And, and really, ultimately, what we've been coming up with so far is it takes a return to God. It takes a spiritual revival to happen. But before we go back into that with more questions for Sam about unity, national unity, is it even a possibility at this point? I want to turn to a question for uh, one of our behind-the-scenes people for our program producer, Tim Schneider. Tim, could you let us know some of the things, amazing uh, opportunities that are going on behind the scenes, maybe, or on our websites and things like that for Stand the Gap Media and American Pastors Network? Yes, I can certainly answer those questions for 
Lee Isaac. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to everybody. We are on social media. We're on lots of different places on social media. One of those social media platforms is YouTube. We have three great YouTube channels, the American Pastors Network, Stand in the Gap TV, and Stand in the Gap Radio. Check them out to see archives and all the great content being posted. One of the things you can do is on most Fridays, you can go and see a live version. You can see Sam and Isaac as this program is running. You can see them in a video format on our Stand in the Gap um, radio YouTube channel. Go and check that out over there. Also on some of the other ones, we have some great stuff, Stand in the Gap TV programs and lots of other great content. So subscribe to our YouTube channels by searching for American Pastors Network, Stand in the Gap Radio, and Stand in the Gap TV, and search and subscribe to these channels to be notified when new content is posted. Also, we encourage you to please pray for this ministry. We covet your prayers, and really nothing happens without prayer. It's the catalyst to make many things happen, and there's certainly power in it. So please encourage you to Please pray for this ministry. Also, please consider giving financially. No amount too big, no amount too small is too much. And in the summer months, sometimes people go on vacation and they forget a lot about ministries and things like that. But please don't forget us in your vacations as we still got some time left this summer. So please consider giving financially if the Lord puts that on your heart. So always lots going on here behind the scenes and throughout the American Pastors Network and Standing the Gap Media. But today we got a radio program, so I'm going to go ahead and give it on back to you, Isaac. Well, thank you very much, Tim. Um, Sam, so we've been looking at the morality question in our nation, and we, we came basically up with, you know, that, that we had a morality in the founding of our nation, especially our pilgrim forefathers. Uh, there were other nations in the Western Hemisphere being founded from religions, even supposed Christian religions, uh, but they didn't really work because they weren't following Scripture. So they looked at the, the indigenous people as how can we use them? How can we enslave them? How can we steal from them? They didn't see them um, as made in the image of God, for example. Even Jamestown didn't have the morality that the pilgrims had even before they got off the, the boat into a more or less a barren part of the country that didn't have all the golden things that the, the uh, conquistadors were finding in the south. Uh, they they came up with this Mayflower Compact, but part of that was also a unity that they were looking for and wanting to have. And and our nation has been seeing um, really uh, a lot of division. And so I think it was a surprise. I know in in a lot of ways I was surprised when I saw Trump almost immediately after being shot, uh, President Trump. Here's this assassination attempt, and you would expect blaming or you know pointing fingers. And he was calling for unity, and that's that's continued throughout uh, this week. Then you know, culminating uh, here at the RNC with with the call from him and, and others for unity, and and from other sides too. Um, what do you think uh, would be realistic for us at this point if we're if we continue in our spiritual condition that our country is in? Realistically, what kind of unity can we expect? Um, Isaac, um, you and I have talked about this. I think this is a really critical question. And, uh, and again, it's been discussed this week in the convention. There's references in the platforms. Actually, uh, on uh, yesterday, uh, David, you and I actually compared and contrasted some uh, changes in the 20 of 2016 Republican platform compared to the one that's now that's been adopted this week. And uh, there were some very, very significant changes that were made. Uh, and I'm not going to go there uh, as much as this. In the 2016, which is when uh, Donald Trump first ran, there was a reference really at the beginning even of that uh, platform where it talked about uh, being unified around common principles. And that was, that was actually pretty good. In this platform, there's nothing actually written in the platform about unity. Now, here, here is the point, I think, as I think about it. We are witnessing a political activity work its way out. This is what the convention is this week. The Democrats, if they have one, who knows what's going to take place with them, occurs down here in August. They will go through a similar process. Politicians generally don't think in terms of unity, Isaac, as much as they think in terms of agreement. And I don't think there, I think there's a difference. Um, you need agreement. That's the compromise system. That's when you go in and sit down and work on a bill to get a vote. You try to seek agreement. You don't have to have unity. But as believers, we know, 
a mark of true Christianity is unity. Well, unity with what? Well, it's unity with agreement with God about what he says is important and then finding others who agree with God and therefore they agree with you. Um, that is only possible. Unity, unity really, not agreement, but unity, I think Isaac is, is, is biblical unity and it's only possible when we have a biblical worldview and we start with God as creator, us as a creation of God, us made as in the image of God, us born into a sinful state with a sinful heart, but which for which God has made the plan of salvation, redemption possible to restore us to relationship with God, which has to be on his terms, not ours, and holy. Now, when we do that, Isaac, we are in unity. I, I, I think it's not possible to have unity in the meaning of the word, particularly the biblical context, until the conversation that's happening across this country starts out with God, the God of the Bible, truth, that is the truth of God's word, and agreement with that. Now, here's one thought, and then I'll turn it back to you. When God sent Israel into the land as a nation, and the model for us and our founders picked it up and they identified with it, God said there's two things upon which you need to agree. One, that I am God, you fear me, and two, to the best of your ability, you obey the standards and the commands that I have put up, and that starts with his definition of morality, which we just talked last, last segment. If those two things are done, fear God, keep his commandments, his definition of morality, then Isaac, I think that we can have unity. But I think to talk about unity, absent God, absent absolute truth, absent the Bible, being afraid to talk about the Bible because it's not politically correct, being afraid to talk about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, God the Creator, until we talk about those things that way, that publicly, Isaac, we can only at best hope for temporary agreement. We cannot approach the unity that once was held in this country, particularly at the beginning when we started, when our 56 signers signed that document. Well, well, Sam, Sam, I love that distinction, the difference between unity and agreement and how you go about getting those. Um, I know we don't have a lot of time, but uh, there was a poll taken last year by YouGov.com, and they found that the majority, over two-thirds of Americans, thought that there was more divisiveness, more division in our country now than normal. And, you know, even on our, our seal, it says E Pluribus Unum, and our pledge, it's, you know, under God, one, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. Um, were we more united when we had more of a fear of God? The, 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 the answer, answer is absolutely, absolutely uh, uh, yes. yes. You, you know, know the, the war, war for independence, God blessed, we, we came, came into, into being as a new nation. nation. Holy, Holy experiment. experiment. Talk about William Penn, Penn the founders, founders they, they laid down the foundation, foundation God, God honored it. it. The, the French were in a revolution at the same time. They had no concern about God. They ended up in just rioting. Okay. They, they wanted to find out. Well, we, we, we know the story of the Tocqueville. The historian came here, and he said, what made the difference here in America? How could they come together? How could they, they be victorious over the greatest, the strongest nation in the world? And he said, it wasn't until I went into the churches of America and, and heard, heard the, the preaching, preaching of God's, God's word flame from the pulpits, the pulpits that was the common truth, truth then that, that I understood the secret of America's greatness. greatness. And, and that, that is that America is good, great, because, because America, America is righteous. righteous. That's, that's what he was talking about. about. That, that agreement on what is right, righteousness, righteousness that's, that's what the Tocqueville said. So, so it did exist at one point in our nation's history, history but Isaac, it is a fleeting dream. For, for anybody, anybody out there, there right now, civilian, citizen, or, or politician, to, to ever say that we can make America great again until we understand that only God can make America great again, and America can only be great again when we view and agree with what God says makes a nation great. 
And, you know, Sam, we, we had that object lesson, that opportunity by, you know, seeing President Trump turn his head just a fraction of a different position. And, you know, this this bullet intended for his skull barely nicks his ear. We have an opportunity to return to the Lord. Will we take it? We're going to take another brief time out, come back and talk to Sam about returning to God individually and as a nation. On Stand in the Gap today, frequent guest, constitutional attorney David New, had this to say about the American Pastors Network and our media ministry. The ministry of American Pastors Network is very, very unique. All the host members that run the show are very devout men of God. They have all kinds of guests from different backgrounds on all kinds of subjects, but they all basically boil down to one thing. We're in the business of honoring Jesus Christ. This is a program that is worthy of your prayer support. It is worthy of your financial support. You will be blessed, and those who listen to this program will be blessed. Thanks, David. We certainly agree. And that's why we're inviting you to tune in to Stand in the Gap today. To learn more and see the many resources we offer, visit our website at standinthegapmedia.org. That's standinthegapmedia.org. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, God told the fathers, diligently teach your children the ways of God. BJU Press K-12 textbooks are designed to help parents do just that. Whether you teach your children at home, online, or in Christian school, make sure they're getting an integrated biblical worldview instruction. In our nation's early days, Pennsylvania's William Penn understood God's requirement for freedom and national blessing, and he emphasized the necessity of parents and government leaders providing for a virtuous or godly education of the youth. Sadly, our children in government schools today are being taught historical falsehoods, immorality, and evolution. Like a roaring lion, the devil stealing our children's hearts and minds through deceit and lies. But a rigorous, godly education can still raise up Daniel's and Joseph's, Esther's and Ruth's. A friend of freedom and your partner in godly K-12 education, BJU Press is here for you. Don't take chances with your children. Visit BJUPress.com for your best option. Let's start with God's Word. This is Ken Ham, CEO of the ministry behind the family-friendly Answers TV streaming platform. Do we really need ideas like the gap theory that we've looked at this week to add millions of years into the Bible? Why not consider a different approach, believing God's Word? Ideas like the gap theory have not been suggested because Genesis is so vague we can't know what God meant. It's very clear, and a plain meaning is confirmed in places like Exodus that says, for in six days the Lord created. The Bible isn't the problem. The problem is taking man's ideas about the past and then reinterpreting God's Word as if we know better. We must reject this approach and allow God's Word to be the authority in all areas. Listen to this program again or view a complete transcript at AnswersRadio.com. You'll find so many resources for your family at AnswersRadio.com. I'm Jeremy Scott with Mission Network News. America is reeling after a shooter tried to kill former President Donald Trump at a rally on Saturday. There are still many unanswered questions, but for Christians, how will we represent Christ in this time of fear and anger? Greg Yoder at Keys for Kids Ministry says the assassination attempt has prompted cries for unity over division. Believers can make the first move by showing others the love and truth of Jesus. Find Keys for Kids gospel resources at missionnews.org. And Unknown Nations is partnering with Megavoice to bring audio Bibles to unreached people. Greg Kelly with Unknown Nations says this collaboration allows each ministry to focus on its strength. Megavoice creates the hardware and provides the cloud library, while Unknown Nations distributes the devices to unreached areas around the world. Pray for God to bless these ministries' work as they collaborate to spread the gospel. Find your place in the story. Mission Network News, a service of One Way Ministries. I'm Jeremy Scott. You're listening to Stand in the Gap today. For more information, visit our website at standinthegapradio.com. Welcome back to our program. I'm Isaac Crockett. I'm joined by Sam Rohr as we finish up this uh, conversation we've been having, asking Sam questions uh, about some of the impacts that we're seeing from what happened on Saturday night's uh, assassination attempt against President Donald Trump 
and uh, President Biden's reaction and others, you know, reactions to that. Uh, we're really looking at the morality and unity that is so sought after in our nation right now. Is it attainable? And uh, Sam, in the, the last uh, segment, you said really there's a difference between true unity, like uh, the e pluribus unum, the kind of stuff that our nation was founded on by our pilgrim forefathers and Christian forefathers, and just agreeing together to get stuff done um, in a more pragmatic way. And it would be great to see true morality, biblical morality, true unity in a changing way come into our nation. But unless we have a return to God, I don't think we can we can see that. And that's what we've been talking about this program. So, Sam, you talk about this a lot. You've written on it. You've written a book on it, different things. Uh, what would it look like if America did, as a whole, return to God? What would we expect to see in our nation? Well, Isaac, what, what we, we would see, and again, again I'm, I'm going to go back to Scripture. There's a lot of books that, that, that people can cite and so forth, but um, 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 I go very, very frequently to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Uh, uh, actually, on Monday of this week, I played a couple of excerpts from Pastor Jack Hibbs from Calvary Chapel in Chino Hills, Pennsylvania. He actually had his entire congregation, a couple thousand people, three different services, about 6,000 altogether people, and, uh, and they quoted, uh, he read, and then they did responsibly and back and forth, the entire chapter of Deuteronomy chapter 8. I haven't seen anybody do that for a long time. I thought, that's really good, uh, Jack, to do that. The people read it. Because in that chapter, that's, it is what's applicable to America today. That was written to Israel, but it's written to all nations. And our founders went to that as a portion of the promise. When they were considering, can we raise up a new nation? This new world? Is it possible? that we could actually do what God says and see God promise and give to us what he promised to Israel? And they said, yes, we can, because that's what the Word of God says. So they did that. But that's why in that chapter, Isaac, it starts out with God is the one that raises up people and leaders in office, and he puts them down. God raises up nations. God puts nations down. And God offers promises to any nation, any people who at some point in time might have an ability to be a part of a nation or to start a nation. Our founders were there to be able to begin this holy experiment. So they did that. And, and that's where God says, you fear me and you keep my commandments and I will give you all the blessings and first 14 verses of that chapter lays out all the blessings from health to many children to security from the enemy to uh, a surplus of funds they wouldn't be they wouldn't be indebted they wouldn't be in debt and they wouldn't be indebted to their enemies uh, they wouldn't have lawlessness on their streets they would not live in fear so security and safety God said I will give you but he said if you turn your back on me and you walk away from me, and you redefine what I said to be important, and you think that what you got came from your hands instead of mine, I'm going to turn all of those upside down. And then he gives twice as many judgments or cursings, so that now the people are getting sick, the families are falling apart, the food supply is becoming questionable, the weather is becoming harsh and unpredictable. Enemies within the open borders will arise. You will see the lawlessness on your streets. You will be threatened from enemies without. You will no longer be the one who lends to other nations. You will be indebted to them. America, 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 America. And once when you were honored and respected around the world, you will be held in disdain. America, America, America. And that was the point. And that is the point now, Isaac. So, what does God say? Well, what God says to any nation is, I will send reminders to you along the way when you depart from me. Well, God has been reminding America for a long time. 9-11 was a reminder. Lost wars. We haven't won a war since World War II. Those are reminders. We're in debt out our ears, and our leaders are just continuing to spend as if they do not care, and they seem not to care. God says, that is a mark of my judgment. Our people are sick. Our families are falling apart. did isn't just accident. You can't just blame it on the Democrats. You can't blame it on the Republicans. You blame it on people who say, well, you know, 
We'll trust in government. Governments are our God. Safety comes from man, not from God. And we'll just live our lives the way we want to. Isaac, this is the wake-up call for where we are now. And can we, again, uh, come under the blessings of God? Well, this way. I don't know in God's plan. God's prophetical plan's moving along. Uh, America it does, is not there as a major role at some point in prophecy. We know that. But we don't know if we're at that time or not. But I do know this. If we do not return to God in our heart in repentance and saying, Oh, Lord, we have sinned. We've walked down the path where we believed we were God. We have denied your hand and thought we did it all ourselves, which is exactly what the Scripture says, what Israel did. Unless we do that and come back to him, confess our sins, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, humble ourselves, number one. Boy, should a shooting assassination attempt humble? That's why I pray for the humility and the humbling of Donald Trump. But all of those around him, and all of those in Congress, but all of us, every citizen, it starts there, and it works its way up. It's all around. But if we do humble ourselves, and we pray to God with clean hands, repentant heart, and we say, here are our sins, we write, we've been involved in idolatry, we've been murdering the unborn, the shedding of innocent blood, We've been, been involved in, in now our wholly owned by bribery and, co and corruption, which is what God says in Ezekiel 22. 22. Until, Until we, we do those, those things, Isaac, there will be no blessing from God. God. Now, now, here's, here's the, the point. point. Will God change the way, the direction of his plan is going? I don't know. But I do know this. I know that he will not change the hand of judgment unless we do those things. So, so that's, that's where we are. are. So, so we, we, we know, but God, God hasn't changed. Uh, uh, mankind, mankind has got to come to the point where we say, God, God it's our fault. fault. It's not, not your fault. fault. Mm -hmm. Well, Sam, what can we do, those of us who love God, those who have a biblical worldview, uh, whether or not our national leaders or even our whole nation returns to God, what can we do personally for revival in our own lives? I want to, we don't have a lot of time, but maybe you have time to, to say something about that and, and perhaps time to close this in prayer. But what can we do for ourselves personally and then hopefully making an in, in impact on those around us? Uh, I think, Isaac, Isaac the, first the first thing, thing is that we stop saying if you and, and looking across, across the street or somebody, somebody else, else across, across the country, country if, if they, they would, would just change, change the way they are, we would be better. better. And, and we, we have to start, start by looking in the mirror. Because that's, that's where God's people. people. If, if the judgment comes first to the house of God, God, God says in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called, called by my name. So, so if we say that we are Christians, that's where it has to start. And, and Isaac, it's, it's when, when we, again, again humble ourselves, ourselves and do what God says. says. When, when we do that, that not worrying what our neighbor does, not, not demanding of somebody else that they change what they're doing, doing but, but we admit that it's, it's, it's us. us. It, it starts right in our own individual, individual heart. That's what I tried to do on Monday. That's, that's how we look at these things. We can look around and say, well, you know, it's somebody else's fault. But, but no, no, we, we have, have to look around and look in the mirror and say, Lord, what am I doing? How have I responded? How have I fallen short? Lord, I repent for walking in my own strength, for not praying. But it really starts, Isaac, it starts with people looking and saying, Lord, we'll have a relationship with you, not talking about God, talking to God, not talking about am I a Christian, but actually saying, am I a born-again Son of God, God through faith, faith in Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. That's, That's where it starts. starts. If that were to happen, Isaac, huh, this, this country would change. change. Amen. Well, thank you all for listening. Uh, whether you were able to hear all of it or part of it, if you could, uh, if you haven't heard all of it, you can go online and listen to all of it. But thank you for listening. Please pray for us here. And until next time, I pray that you will stand in the gap for truth wherever you are. If you like today's program, tell a friend. You'll also want to hear Stand in the Gap Weekend and watch the nationally syndicated Stand in the Gap TV program. We present the news of the day truthfully, carefully, and consistently from a biblical worldview and constitutional perspective. If you're hungry for the truth, visit StandInTheGapMedia.org to find all our programs and the stations that carry them. While you're there, be sure to download our free app and support this ministry with your best financial gift. 
Then join us again right here Monday through Friday for another program of Stand in the Gap Today.